Legendary Allure is the worst selling hero of 2024. So far. But what if I told you this unit was my key to success for getting rank 1 in Summoner Duels R? Well my friends, I present to you my rank 1 SDR run with Illyr, Engaging Fire. This SDR season, the map is Highland Woods, and the captain skills are Headlong Rush, Secret Maneuver, and Eminence. The main features of this map are the central forest and mountain tiles that make it difficult for all movement types except flyers to traverse the middle. At first glance, this may seem like a map favored for flyers, but in reality, cavalry units dominated. That's because of two key factors for this season. First is the introduction of Valentine's Murr, who combines the utility of Warp Bubble and a Far Savior, packaged into one lovely unit. By herself, Murr puts a stop to Legendary Hinoka's charge support and Soaring Guidance, greatly weakening the mobility of Flyer Team. The second reason is the return of this captain skill, Eminence. It has been over a year since this captain skill was last available, and with the Queen of Pathfinder herself, Dogger, getting both a cavalry version and a remix, it was her time to shine. And if dealing with two Pathfinder units wasn't enough, both versions of Dogger give their support partner Pathfinder as well. When you factor in Eminence, now you can kind of see how oppressing cavalry units become. Speaking of which... Yeah, the prime cavalry unit himself, Duo Leon. To deal with him effectively, we need to come up with a team that has both high threat range to outmaneuver his duo button and bulk to withstand his enormous pre-combat damage. Uh, that's gonna be a hard task, but I think I have just the solution. Our newest legendary hero, Alir, shines upon us a new age of Omni Tanks. His weapon, Divine One's Arts, has dual phase brave attacks and can give him massive stat swings during combat. Compared to his female counterpart, Alir trades 40% damage reduction for 50% damage reduction piercing and scowl. But what makes this unit really stand out from his contemporaries is his A skill, Emblem's Miracle, which allows Alir to survive a lethal attack once and heal all the way back up to full HP. It's important to note that this miracle effect only takes effect if Alir has at least three allies nearby. As for the build, I've opted to run Magical Null follow-up to further pierce through damage reduction, and more importantly, provide NFU to Alir to better his defensive matchups. As for his C skill, it may seem strange to replace Pledge with Attack Res Ploy, but that's because Marth, Alir would go. be utilizing Marf's Engage Ring making Dragon's Roar into a one cooldown special. Unless the enemy has guard, Alir would always trigger Dragon's Roar on either of his brave attacks. Now that he has an open C slot, I've chosen Ploy 4 for the extra stat swing it provides and exposure, which is an amazing debuff to inflict for units with brave attacks. For my second unit, I've chosen who I consider the best far save in the game, Valentine's Murr. We've already talked about how incredible her support is. Giving Warp Bubble to not only herself, but also her support partner is incredible utility that pairs nicely with Alir's bulky playstyle. Because Duo Leon is public enemy number one, I've opted for a hardy fighter Aegis build to survive his attack. For my next unit, I needed someone who could provide mobility to the team. I could use a flyer with Guidance 4 to ferry around Alir and Murr, but that wouldn't really work against other teams that also had Murr. In addition, warping from Guidance 4 and Soaring Guidance felt like a waste since we had the Eminence Captain skill. So our main method of movement would come from none other than Harmonic Egren. She provides plus one movement and bypass terrain to infantry and armored allies. Combine this with eminence on our captain and we essentially have our own pseudo cavalry line. The game plan is for Egren to completely shred through enemy health bars with her massive AoE damage. 
Infantry Pulse 4 would not only charge her own special, but also Alir's, allowing Dragon's Roar to be instantly ready on turn 1. Now, one issue with the extra movement buff provided by Egren is Stall. While Duothor isn't as common as she used to be, that stall debuff would be tricky to play around. Harsh Command Plus would remedy this, but I decided to be a bit adventurous with my fourth team member. There is only one unit in the game that completely negates start of turn debuffs, and that unit is none other than Freyr. I know what you might be thinking, really Freyr? Aren't there like way better options? And yeah, you'd definitely be right, but I wanted to give this guy a shot. Not only does Freyr complement my team pretty well, all things considered, but I also just like his design and voice acting. He's one of the few Fey OCs that I've grown to like over the years. <sighs> but the same cannot be said about my final team member, Halloween Anna. She is by far my least favorite unit in this game. She's strong, she's speedy, and she has a very stupid harmonic button that instantly charges Miracle. And while I despise this unit's design, I hate to admit that she is the perfect fifth member for my team. Because of her flying mobility, Halloween Anna can catch a lot of teams off guard by utilizing her three movement from Snap and Pathfinder from Eminence to soar across the mountain tiles and snag a kill. First match of the season, and already we've run into Duo Leon. This should be fun. My opponent's team also features Legendary Alir, with Harmonic Egren providing the movement buff as well. They also have Hortensia, who is an amazing support unit, especially paired with Alir. Hortensia's debuffs are strong, but thankfully Freyr is protecting us from them. I go ahead and pop Anna's harmonic skill to charge up Miracle, and my opponent sets up Leon to trigger his duo skill. And if you're not familiar with Leon's duo skill, well, you're about to see how toxic it is. Immediately, Anna and Murr's actions have ended, essentially putting the fight to a 3v5. But all is not lost yet. Just because Murr's action has ended doesn't mean she can still protect us from ranged attacks. Additionally, even Pulse Tire from Freyr has decharged the enemy Egren's Blazing Wind special, greatly nerfing her damage output. Meanwhile, our Egren is poised to unleash a powerful AoE special on the enemy Alir. As long as we can maintain good threat range, we can mitigate the damage done by Leon's duo skill. Together. One. We are invincible. <sighs> I am with you. The enemy Leo not only takes out Egren, but also freezes Anna for a second time. My opponent keeps Leon in place to try to press her advantage, but thanks to the Eminence Captain skill, Freyr is able to take him out. Now that Leon is defeated and we have a 3 point lead, we can safely play defensively for the rest of the match. Wait for my opponent to slip up and strike with Anna.
For match 2, yeah, this doesn't look good for me. Not only was my opponent's team the number one meta composition for this season, but it's just also super highly optimized. I mean, Assassin Strike Egren and Flow Desperation plus no Quarter Brave Crom, those are just elite builds, but let's just see how this pans out. With just one action, the enemy team has threatened the entire zone, barring just three tiles. So if I wanted to do my normal opener, I'd have to go ahead and pop Anna's harmonic skill. Right here, we can see the power of Pathfinder. Krom's massive attack range puts Mimer in jeopardy, and if I'd actually had done some damage calculations, I should have known that a flow desperation no quarter Krom would absolutely destroy Mur. But I was a bit too confident in her abilities, which cost me. The correct play for me was definitely to just move Alir up to protect her. This should do it. Krom takes out my far save, and we are in a very precarious spot. Leon is able to freely come in, attack Anna, can't to the safety since I don't have can't to control on my team, and with the cherry on top, freeze Egren in the process since she has the highest visible speed. That is a terrible chain of events to happen to me, but I don't really have many options. Freyer right now is able to take out Krom, but I decided to take out their Dogger with Egren to eliminate two you sources win. of Pathfinder on their team. Leon revenge kills Egren, and in the process, freezes Anna for the next turn. And at this point, classic Leon shenanigans ensue, and the game is pretty much lost for me. I can't end this way. And yeah, for a second time, Anna's action immediately ends. This is 100% the most crushing defeat I've ever faced in SDR. But hey, if I was gonna lose, I'd want to be defeated by the number one meta comp. It just feels right, you know? Match number 3, and this team looks a lot more manageable to face. Yunaka may be a slight problem due to our lack of cancer control, but for some reason my opponent has opted to switch off Robin's default C skill, which is also cancer control for attack speed menace of all things. Interesting choice, but hey, that just makes it easier for Anna to sweep through. Just like the first match, our opponent tries to set up Leon's duo button to freeze Anna and Murr, but we're not going to let that happen. Drawback from Alir lets us bring Anna out of the way while maintaining a nice, aggressive position. Erica. Yes? Igren's action has ended, but that's perfectly fine. Last turn, I ended my own actions early so that I could get the first move for turn 2. Now, Anna is able to take out Leon before he gets to wreak havoc. With the combination of a 3 movement flyer and eminence, my opponent really doesn't have any safe tiles within the zone. And now that Freyr has caught up with the team, legendary Robin's debuffs don't affect us anymore. Not that they really made a difference in the first place. Mm? 
my work holidays. Yeah, my opponent has no way to break through Hardy Fighter Mer, so it's game over for them. Let me guide you. This is my first time ever seeing Safi initiate combat, and may I just say, that staff animation looks really cool. You know, despite how weak my opponent's team is, I do gotta respect them for fighting till the end, cause then we get to see this cool animation one last time. Let me guide you. Moving on to match number 4, and as soon as I saw a duo Dogger and Yunaka, I already knew that this was going to be a tough match. Ordinarily, these aren't that troublesome of units to face, especially in SDR, but I didn't have any source of counter control, so I'd have to use expert positioning to make sure I could keep up. Here I use Anna's harmonic skill, which was immediately a huge mistake. There's really no need to pre-charge Miracle right now. Instead, the best move is to move Alir in front of Anna to provide Pathfinder for Igren to extend our range and threaten to kill Yunaka, who is really the only threat on the board. Instead, I play it too slow. Avert your eyes. The enemy Plumeria dances Yunaka, which not only gives her foe penalty doubler from cloying dreams, but also, most importantly, desperation from Firestorm Dance. I always forget about this skill, but it's super powerful for nukes to ensure that they can kill far saves that rely on a counterattack to recharge their defensive special. The only true way to counter this is to run Hardy Bearing Seal on your own far save. If you've ever run into a super optimized SD team, chances are that you've seen Hardy Bearing Winter Bylift to counter this exact strategy. <laughs> Leon ends Egren's action, and right here, this is a scary sight. If I don't take out Leon now, then he can press his duo button to end Alir, Anna, and Egren's actions all at once. As much as I would love to take out the enemy Yunaka, I can't let Leon do that. Ready for your shift? My opponent does some masterful positioning to wrap Yunaka around the mountains to take out Igren, and once again, I really wish I had cancel control on this team. In Lady Freya's name. Ouch. Yeah, Yunaka just simply outspeeds Alir here, and due to Firestorm Dance, she doesn't give Alir the chance to counterattack. Okay, so that last match didn't go very well, and since my only bonus unit is Emblem Marth, who is not a great unit for SDR, I really only had one life remaining. And of course, we run into another team that I really should have brought cancer control for. Yikes, this might not end well. Ow. 
My opponent immediately sends in Leom to shut down Ygren, and surprise, once again I get punished for not having cancel control. Alir unfortunately can't reach Leon, which gives my opponent uh, the chance to do pretty much anything they want. Interestingly, they choose to use Kagro's dual button to move in and finish off Mur. Starting off turn 2, we have the first action, and since we no longer have a far save, we are at the mercy of the enemy's massive attack range with Duo Kagero. Since Igren is most likely to die, I go ahead and just take out Leon with her. The 3 movement from Snap lets me take out one of my opponent's doggers, which will make the rest of the fight a lot easier. Ready for your shift? Funnily enough, Dogger does exactly 48 damage to Anna here. You can tell because Anna's miracle special never actually triggers. If I had just one more HP on her, she would have been able to survive another round of combat. A bit unfortunate. These zone points are crucial. We have the lead now, so I can't squander this. Bring in those customers. Bagaro takes out a third unit on my team, and this is the final turn that Alir will have plus one movement, since both Igren and Anna are now gone. So my next moves are paramount. One option I considered was moving Freyr towards Kagro so that Alir and him could do a pincer attack. The less spaces we can have Kagro travel, the less distance she can canto away. But at the heat of the moment, I wasn't too confident in Freyr's ability to tank Kagro, but I really should have committed to it. Instead, I played it safe by grouping my units. We'll see if this was a mistake. For turn 4, I decide to take a gamble and try out my pincer attack, but it's just too late. Alir doesn't have enough mobility to compete with Selif and Kagero, so it's up to Freyr to clutch up the game. <laughs> Thank goodness. Turns out I should have just gone for the pincer attack on turn 3, but at least we didn't lose. After that match, I was not going to mess around anymore. I definitely need Kanto control. This too is fate. Okay, let's try this again. With Alir now having cancel control, we should have a much better time against these cavalry units. And to be completely honest, I'm not even sure if Attack Resploy even did we anything. Are invincible. Alir uses drawback on Anna, and this may seem like an overly aggressive move, but I wanted to bring the fight to my opponent. Putting Alir in this junction right underneath the bridge would prevent the enemy Leon from getting into a position that'll freeze multiple units of his duo button, which is something we've seen a couple times already.
Thanks to her harmonic button, the enemy Agren gets Desperation, which lets her take on Murr, and due to her AoE special, Aaliyah and Anna are not in great shape. We can at least get a captain kill and take out Leon, but after that, Aaliyah is pretty much dead. Our bonds are strong. The enemy Krom easily finishes off Aaliyah thanks to Flow Desperation, allowing him to attack right after triggering Emblem's Miracle. And again, it kinda sucks that Desperation has been the bane of my run so far. If there's anything to take away from my SDR performance, it's that Hardy Bearing is a pretty important seal to have, not just offensively, but also defensively. Together as one. Here I notice that my opponent only has Harsh Command on two of their three remaining units, and while that's not a terrible strategy when their team is so mobile, it does lead to them not having many options when a trade war ensues. In fact, there's no way for Dogger to get Byleth into position to protect Krom, so we get a free kill on him with a grin. Now, the enemy dogger can't break through Freyr, so we handily win this match. It wouldn't be your average SDR run if I didn't face some poor gold-ranked player just trying to climb the ladder. Even though they're using Duo Leon and some relatively strong units, they have almost no synergy with each other, and I can easily steamroll through this team. I will say, the barrier to entry for Sumner Duels Ranked is quite high, and the way this game's matchmaking works doesn't make it any easier for folks that don't have a ton of meta units. Ready for your shift? If you're wondering, yes, every single match so far has included Duo Leon. This unit actually plagued this game mode. And you might also be wondering why I'm not using him myself. Well, I actually tried to fit him on my team initially, but believe it or not, I couldn't justify slotting him in over any of my current team members. Welcome. Using Duo Leon on my SDR team would mean I would have to completely scrap Legendary Alir and create a team very similar to my second opponent. But I really wanted to show off Legendary Alir, and so here we are. Starting turn 2, I noticed that none of the enemy units have cancel control. Hmm, doesn't that seem familiar? Anyways, Anna is free to soar across the mountains and take out Dogger for free, winning us our 8th match. Bring in those customers! These next two matches aren't really anything special, classic Summoner Duels matchmaking at its finest. And honestly, it kinda sucks I had to face these lower ranked people. On one hand, it does make getting rank 1 a whole lot easier, but on the other hand, I just don't feel like I'm really showcasing the strength of my team. Oh well. If you're wondering, I did my SDR run on the first day, at 10pm EST, and from past experience, I found this time to play pitted me against the most low-ranked gold-tier players, compared to any other day the event was run. Take that tidbit with a grain of salt, but I have a sneaking suspicion that if you want to rank up against easy opponents, playing on day 1 near the end, close to reset time for day 2 would net you some free wins. For our 11th match, my opponent is playing a very bold game by running a bunch of flying units. Murr is able to quickly stop them from utilizing Soaring Guidance to set up, and something I didn't even realize until now is that their captain skill is Headlong Rush. Yeah, Valentine's Murr completely shuts this team down. The only saving grace they have is that Ivy gets plus one movement from her tome, but that's just not going to be enough, I'm afraid. If we take a quick look and analyze the board, we can see that my Halloween Anna covers a lot more space than the enemy Anna. 
That's because my opponent isn't running any infantry or armored melee units to take advantage of Snap's movement buff, so we can freely take out Ivy and jump back to safety, instantly winning us the match. And we're back to our regular scheduled program of facing Duo Leon. Except at this point, I've gotten pretty comfortable at facing him, especially on teams with very little threat range and therefore no good answer to Halloween Anna sniping one of their units. We value your business. I've put a Leer in place as per my normal opener, and right now I want to highlight something very sneaky that my opener does. On turn 1, Anna does not get plus 1 movement because she doesn't start within 2 spaces of either a Leer or Mur. So in the opponent's eyes, it seems like Anna can only move up to 3 spaces if we account for Eminence. But once turn 2 begins... Now, Anna gets plus one movement from Snap and can effectively move four spaces, essentially covering the entire zone. You can bet this definitely caught my opponent off guard. And what's this? The enemy team doesn't have cancel control. Don't mind if I do. Man, this is a pretty underwhelming end to my SDR run, but again, I'm pretty sure the time of day I started playing just conveniently had next to no high-ranked players online. But I am glad I was able to get rank 1 of this team. Legendary Alir's unit design is right up my alley with his miracle gimmick, and I'm super stoked to continue using him for future SDS seasons as a raid boss. We'll settle this. Together! Welcome! Need help? We can see this through. And there we go, rank 1 achieved. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for more Summoner Duel shenanigans.